Hello everyone, welcome to a Professionally Unprofessional. I'm Calvin, joined once again by my good friends Reese in the middle and Elliot on the right. Hello everyone. August 26, 2036, heat death of the universe. Oh god, yeah, again, if you hear any fans going on in the background, the heat wave is still going on in England. Hence why I'm glad there's no video for this right now because I'm wearing a sleeveless top. You slots. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god yeah calvin's stripping down just for us take that um um, um uh, reese calling me a slut take that off your bingo cards people um i don't think it's even on the bingo card uh there's a that's a new one for the bingo card um there's uh so shall we t uh so it was the xbox showcase yesterday and again just to give you the credentials about why we maybe should or shouldn't be watching this uh i'm the only one who owns an xbox series x elliot does have a game pass account and reese is just here for the multi-plats yes so reese is just here for fun oh, yep as always i feel like though this is uh, there's a couple of interesting things about this showcase like we're going into this thing with microsoft taking l after l after l over the past couple of months they have not been doing very well over the last um six to eight weeks Let's be honest, they haven't been doing well since the Series X really came out. But I thought this year was going to be their year. Like, they launched great with Hi-Fi Rush at the beginning of the year. And they had that brilliant developer direct. Like, yeah, Minecraft Legends wasn't very good. I mean, a lot of people liked it. I didn't really like it. Um, and um, Redfall was a total disaster. Ah, uh, but yes, I think I kind of learned my lesson after Halo Infinite, where people were saying this is what will save the Xbox. It kind of didn't. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll go into Halo. I'm actually going to talk about Halo Infinite at the end of this because Halo Infinite wasn't here, and I was surprised. I thought Halo Infinite was a lock for this for the new battle royale mode. Um, yeah, but the the thing is though, I kind of want Xbox to do well because I think a healthy Xbox is a healthy industry because they will challenge PlayStation in a way that Nintendo isn't really doing. That like Nintendo's. Nintendo and PlayStation do not see themselves as adversarial in any way, shape, or form. They just Nintendo does their own thing and, and doesn't really interact with the other two. Yeah. They haven't. They haven't really done so since the Wii. Yeah, the, and even uh, yeah, yeah. There's and the thing, and the thing for me is that uh, what I really wanted about this thing was updates on their current first party lineup. Because let let's be honest, they they put. A lot of the, there's been a lot of games that we got CG trailers for three years ago, and we haven't seen anything since. Yeah, and they sort of delivered on that with this thing. But the 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 question I'm going to come back to at the end of this, this so I'm, I want you to hold your thoughts on this. What will Xbox? What's going to be Xbox's future post Starfield? Like what whatever, however Starfield turns out, do they have a backup if? Starfield doesn't turn out great. Mm. Um, so let we'll come back to that at the end. Let's go through the showcase itself. First trailer was the trailer they had to show, which was Fable, which we now know stars Richard Iowardi. Featuring oh. Moss from IT Crowd. Yeah. Which is a major shock when that first came on. I was not expecting to see him. Yeah, I know. I I um I sent a I sent a thing to Ren, by the way, Rich Diawadi's in the new Fable game, because he actually quite likes Fable. And uh, his response was the uncanny valley is very much in effect here. Yeah, very much. Uh it's been done by Playground Games, which is very weird considering they're the Forza Horizon team. Um, apparently the news that, um... Do we know, I guess, in, do we know if Peter Molyneux is still involved with the series? I don't believe Peter Molyneux is involved in this one, no. I mean, where right, are Play okay. Uh, Reese, help me out here. Do you know where Playground Games are from? I think, that, aren't they a British um, studio? I, I think they could be American. I'll double check that, give me a second. Uh, Playground Games. Uh, because... Uh, I was because I I I think you were right. I thought they were um, an American studio. And I thought I I never quite works when Amer when Amer uh, uh, the yeah, American I don't teams. Know, British. Yeah, they are. They're a British team. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Hence why, uh, which, which makes it even weirder that they put um, um, uh, Derwent Water right near Edinburgh in Forza Horizon Four. I was like, <laughs> they're miles apart from each other. 
Um, hey, British doesn't mean Scottish. There's um. Here's the thing though. Playground. Uh, so Playground Games is doing this one. They are a good studio, but I, I think the news that they were. Um, that the, the game has been restarted is a bit is a, a bit unfounded. I found a, a couple of sources that said I don't know what they're on about the game's progressing all right. It's had, hit a few hiccups, but not nearly to the extent that these reports are claiming. However, I did notice one thing about the trailer: no release date on even a window. Yeah. And also no actual gameplay. It was all in-engine. Yes. I think, we, I think we did see a tiny bit at the end where the main character was fighting Moss. But, yeah, no, it's a um, majority of it was in-engine, not yeah. the actual yeah. gameplay. That... I'm, I'm just looking at um, all the games Playground Games has made. It's just Forza, 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 Lego Forza, Fable, Forza, Forza, Hot Wheels Forza, 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 Forza. Forza. Just nothing but Forza here. Oh, yeah, didn't they do that Fable Connect game? Oh god. I didn't even know we had a Fable Connect game. Yeah, they yeah. they they there was um a, a Fable game for Connect and um I think that was the game they did. Uh no, that was that was still Lionhead. Oh yeah, look, so this is how do you, how do you guys feel about um Fable without Lionhead though? Do you feel like it's going to work or is or did Lionhead bring something to that that um uh, that uh, playground games can't replicate. Well, it depends on who you ask because Fable is was pretty mixed when uh, Lionhead was doing it. Yeah, what? what like about... you, you get a lot of people who say they love the series, but you also get a lot of people that say it's not very good. Uh, I'm gonna ask Ren on this one on stream tomorrow because I know he's a fan of Fable. Um, Reese, what? It, uh, have you played much Fable? Only the original one. What do you think of the look of this one? Well, it's about to tell without actual gameplay. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering... I'm, look, I'm looking at it now. Most of the gameplay I've seen is just running away. Yeah, it's going to be how does this thing play out. But I, I will say the one thing about this game is, about this trailer, is I've got more of an idea of what the game is actually going to be like considering what the original CG trailer looked like. So, uh, no idea when we'll get to play it, but it looks all right. Speaking of another game that we don't know that much about, um, it's an this is the from Compulsion Games. It's the first that you did We Happy Few. It's the first game they've done since... Under the, micro under the Xbox license. Yeah, it's the first, time they, the first game they've done since they got purchased by Xbox, and it's called South of Midnight... Not... Love the uh, love the stop animation style they've gone with. Yeah, it does look very much like it's made uh, like something that would be made by like Leica Studios. You know, the people did like Paranorman and Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh, yeah, looks very similar to that sort of art style. Hello, Alfie. <laughs> yeah, he's just spinning around on me, trying to get comfortable in the heat. Oh, it definitely look. It definitely looks very interesting. It's almost like a. It has a sort of. Grim's dark fairy tale vibes to it. Yeah, but I, again, I, I feel like this was just shown because they wanted to get all, off their chest what Compulsion Games is working on, not that this is inevitably coming in the future. Yeah, I mean, there's no release date. Yeah. I mean, look at, um, say, for example, like uh, uh, this feels to me very similar to um, uh, the game Contraband we saw at E3 2021, which was made, which Avalanche Studios is working on, and we haven't seen anything of that since either. Um, it's a, but at least with this one, I got a bit more of an idea of what kind of game it was. With Contraband, I have no idea what we're getting with that. I don't even remember that one. Uh, it was the one. Uh, oh god, yeah, no, I can't remember what it uh, was. That the one like Miami uh, Vice style where you are smuggling drugs? No, no, no. We saw nothing of this game of the actual gameplay. It was just like a bunch of like environments, and it said it's a co-op open world game where you play as a cartel. Um. Uh, they didn't show any footage of even characters with that one. That was a it was one of the stupidest trailers I remember from that year. Uh, but we'll hopefully we'll see a bit more of South Midnight. I think Compulsion Games is a talented studio. They I didn't really get into We Happy Few, but I know a bunch of people who did. Yeah, I thought We Happy Few was sort of met with a bit of negative, fair bit of negativity. It, Which is shame because I was pretty hyped for that game. 
Ooh. Yeah, that uh, that's because the game is quite unpolished and a lot of bugs. Yeah, yeah, apparently it's gotten better with the patches, but um, yeah. it, again, I think a lot of people I think a lot of people was expecting it to be basically like Bioshock, which apparently it wasn't. Oh, oh, believe me, we're getting the Bioshock comparisons later in this <laughs> bloody thing. Um, next one, uh, Reese perked up because um, it's a Star Wars game being made, unfortunately being made by Ubisoft, but uh, th th they've made good games, Ubisoft, so I'm... It's called um, Star Wars... Name one they've done recently. Oh, re uh, Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I quite like that one. That was more Nintendo, though, let's be honest. No, no, that's I mean, more their own thing. Oh, right, all right. We're taking that out of the mix. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, the re-release of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game. That was... That, that didn't come out... That wasn't made recently, though. No, fair enough. Um, but it's called Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, it looks like it's a bit of a Han Solo-esque game. This game was... This game was teased like a few years ago, wasn't it? Uh, no, that was Star Wars Eclipse yeah. that was got teased a few years ago. Uh, yeah. no, I remember we got like at least a title for this one a short while ago. No, there was the other, the arena one with like fake cowboys and droids in it. You're so, thinking of that? Sorry, this really oh, actually. No, no, what? One sec. Our, uh... Sorry, this really highlights a point I have about Star Wars in general. And I want to know if you guys agree with me this one. There's too much Star Wars. Yeah, Disney's flooded the market with low-quality films and games. It's like there's so didn't many... didn't realise that before. Like, I'm really feeling it now more than ever. Like, there's, like, another season of The Mandalorian, then there's a, then there's um, Vision Season I... 2. Okay, I guess I was wrong. I was probably mistaken about something else. Uh... I just I just remember there was, like, a bounty hunter-like game that only really got, like, a title review or something like that. That, was, that was Star that was Wars Hunters. Was 13, 13. Right, okay. And there was also the one, the the battle royale one that showed up in yeah. that. Um, Nintendo, I think about Nintendo think about Direct. that one, the battle royale. Yeah, th this looks like it's gonna be a Han Solo esque game, but again, it's again. This, now I got this game. I've had Jedi Survivor just recently. Admittedly, this is coming out in twenty twenty four, but that's it's like the point. And it's like seriously, stop. Star Wars is not feeling special anymore. It's supposed yeah. to a Star Wars release is supposed to feel like something special. Yeah, it's just what. Disney does like is what how they've ruined M the MCU by aside from making originally it was just a couple of films a year and now it's basically just they just churning it out yeah, they milked is... the cow they they milked the cow so much they moved onto a horse and uh, it's a case of with start and uh, but I mean we didn't get to see too much of the game it's apparently going to be detailed a bit more in tonight's Ubisoft forward. Oh, yeah. And it also highlights a point that I do. I feel like this Ubisoft Forward is not going to be used to announce anything new. It's just going to be used to say, "Here's the updates on the games that we announced over the weekend." Because they didn't. They they could have saved Prince of Persia for that. They didn't save Prince of Persia. They could have saved Star Wars Outlaws for this. They didn't save yeah. like that. Ubisoft Forward would have been huge if they had. Well, here's a Prince of Persia game and a new Star Wars game instead. We'll put Prince of Persia in Summer Games Fest, and we'll put um, Star Wars in the Xbox show. They also showed off uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage at the Summer Games Fest. That was PlayStation Showcase. Oh, right. Yeah, but that's another point. Assassin's Creed Mirage. That got majority of its trailer at PlayStation Showcase. It's like, Ubisoft, do you want to do your own event? Oh. Another dog <laughs> in the mix now. More dogs! <laughs> I have oh, too many dogs. Um... This has become a... Uh, we should have made this a video podcast. We've now got dogs everywhere in the podcast. Yeah. I have three do I have three dogs here. My mum's left her dog with us. Yay, dogs. <laughs> no, uh, certainly not with... Where my dad's dog and my mum's dog is absolute carnage. Um, But that, I mean, it looks... I mean, Star Wars Outlaws... I'll ask you, Reese, since you're a Star Wars fan. Probably the biggest Star Wars fan out of the three of us. Uh, yeah. What do you what do you think about the idea of Star Wars Outlaws? Well, what has me a bit apprehensive is that they're claiming it's the first ever open world Star Wars game, and knowing Ubisoft's track record, the maps are just being lit littered with dozens of collectibles, mm -hmm. dragging everything down. Uh, yeah, y yeah, you gotta remember, um, Ubisoft complained last year that Elden Ring made open world about Elden Ring's open world design because it yeah. showed them up for for it basically. So yeah. I, I gotta wonder. Despite, 
despite the fact that Elden Ring has, is objectively one of the best open worlds. Yeah, mm. they were really bitter about it. And it, it, I mean, this was obviously just a couple of developers. This doesn't speak. Well, you know, to well, you know, you yourself. Maybe if you didn't keep trying to just do Far Cry Three again, people would actually like you. Yeah, that's the thing. Ubisoft did that thing where they kind of they kind of made Far Cry Three and Assassin's Creed, and they didn't know how to make anything else other than Far Cry Three and Assassin's Creed. Yeah. So uh, next game on the list is. Is uh, it's from Thunder Lotus Games who made um, Starfield, uh, not Starfield. Oh, no, th oh, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. They made um, Spiritfarer. Oh, so, right. Thunder Lotus made Spiritfarer. It's a game called Thirty Three Immortals. Very similar art style to Spiritfarer, but this is a thirty three player co op game. That's a roguelike. Yeah, for an indie studio to do a thirty three player co op game, that is. I mean, even one of the caliber of Thunder Lotus. That yeah. is a big deal. I am dead excited to see what how this is going to play. I have a feeling that the, if 33 people are in there, the frame rate is going to tank. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of lag from 33 different individuals. Yeah. Please, people, invest in Ethernet cables. Um, I proper, lo I proper, proper, proper loved uh, Spirit Bearer, so uh, they've earned my trust, so... Even if this wasn't on Game Pass, uh, this would be a day one pickup from me. I mean, can we be honest? This game looks gorgeous. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I really enjoyed the new uh, uh, art style of it. I was going like for a mythical angle. Yeah, sort of yeah and I I do think they it's inter it's interesting that they did a they've done an action game and they did a cozy slice of life game, and now they've gone back to an action game. <laughs> Yeah, where you end up fighting God, apparently. <laughs> Did either of you guys play Spirit Fairer? No. No, but I have seen it. Uh, it's um it put it this way, it's it's a bit like Animal Crossing, but with a bit more I, platform. I have seen gameplay of it, don't worry. I know what kind of game it is. Yeah, I it's put it this way, it would have been my favourite indie game of twenty twenty if Hades hadn't come out the same year. Yeah. But then again, Hades is one of the best games ever made, so that's side of the point. Um, so that's, um, so that looks cool. Comes out in 2024. It will go to Game Pass Day 1. In fact, I would say most of the third-party games that are featured in this showcase go to Game Pass Day 1, with a couple of exceptions, um, which we'll get to. Uh, so if we don't point it out, it probably means it's, if, unless we point it out, it means it's probably going to Game Pass Day 1. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Payday Free comes out in September. You can pre in. As I I, just... had, I have not heard anything from the series in a long time. Yeah, well, yeah. I I completely forgot this was coming out. It is coming out. I'm pay. I'm playing. Um, like I... this this game was massive. Like when I was in when I was in high school. Yeah, what? for Payday Two. I remember Payday 2's big deal being a big deal, yeah. But uh, it, you can pre-install it now. I discovered this as I discovered this morning when I pre-installed a bunch of Game Pass games to the um, to my system this morning. Um, it, I, I I don't know. I might check this one out, but um, I, I mean, admittedly, I haven't played any. I haven't really played the other Payday games, so I don't really know what I'm in for. Yeah. Uh... From the gameplay we saw, it doesn't look like that much of an improvement over two, except with new enemy variety with a ninja. Okay. Okay. Um, now let's talk about one of the two games that leaked over the other day. Um, it's Atlas got their first announcement out of the way. Um, Persona Free Reload, a remake of uh, Persona Free in Persona 5's engine. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, the vanilla Persona Free. Yeah, a lot of people are pissed off as not taking elements from FES. Uh, yeah. I, I want to point out, um, there is confirmation that some of FES is coming into Persona 3 Reloaded. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's like, I think the, uh, the af like a better term, after story of it. That is coming in, yes. Uh, but they are being a bit coy about it, which to me suggests, while they are majority adapting vanilla Persona 3... 
they're going to put some of their own new stuff in themselves. I think it's that they're not putting the new stuff from Portable or FES in. They're putting their own new stuff in. Yeah. And even with all that, you've got to admit, Persona 3, like, a lot of people played Persona 3 Portable when it went multiplat in January. Persona 3, def it definitely highlights Persona 3 is the one most in need of a remake. Yeah. Well, apart from 1 and 2. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, but, well, obviously, <laughs> but... That's right. I think most people forget about one and two. Yeah. Put it this way: the only... like even I think even people who like a lot of people who like the game admit that the later ones are the better lot. Yeah. I'll put it this way: I got a, one of those PS One minis, and it comes with Persona One on it, and it was it was really interesting going to play it. You it's like... poor poor soul. You got a PlayStation Mini. It was I, I very I was it was very desperate to play a bunch of the games at that point because Sony's terrible at putting their stuff on their store. They are getting better now, but the point was I've wanted a way to play like Metal Gear Solid 1 and uh, Wild Arms and Tekken 3, which still isn't on PS Plus yet. Christ. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's quite good though, because the PlayStation Mini is extremely easy to hack and put all the other ROMs on. Yeah, I'm seriously <laughs> considering hacking it and getting a bunch of ROMs on there, so I have a bunch of these games. But um, the, uh, the, the Persona 1, though, it really plays so differently to all the others. I would be very interested if Atlas said, why don't we remake Persona 1 and 2 like as if we were making a modern Persona game? The reason why I, was, I think the thing that's most difficult is that you, these are very clearly more Shin, Shin Megami Tensei games because of the, the dark tones and whatnot that a lot of the later Persona games don't have. Yeah, you got to remember, they only dropped the Shin Megami Tensei name from the title at, with Persona 5. Up to then, they were always called yeah. Shin Megami Tensei Persona. Yeah, and even then, and even then with Persona 3, with like Persona 3, that's when they started to get into the more sort of, uh, for lack of better terms, upbeat sort of era of Persona games. Now, while there's no official confirmation of a PlayStation 5 and Switch version... The... No, no, there, no, there is. Uh, we've got, we've got. It is coming to all consoles. Yeah, I was about to say it has been leaked through online retail shops that that's happened. Uh, in fact, all the uh, all the Atlas uh, releases, bar one, have confirmation of versions other than the Xbox One. Um. So uh, obviously, Elliot, Persona Three is a pickup for you. This day one purchase is. I'm calling dibs on the. On the review, I will fucking fight you for those rights. Yeah, I might be joining you on that one, Elliot. I've got to see how close it is with Final Fantasy VII re uh, re Rebirth. Because I'm not sure... I think I want to give Persona 3 enough time. But as I say, I think it's very easy to balance Persona 3 and Final Fantasy VII. Because they're very different sorts of games. It will not be. They are long. Yeah, but with Persona, it's quite... E if it's like Persona 5... It's very easy to just say, well, I've done this day, I'll hit the save point here and I'll come back to that later. Persona 5 is over 100 hours long. Yeah, what I mean is it's quite easy to play them simultaneously if you catch my drift. But, um, Reese, uh, Persona 3 Reloaded, does this appeal to you? Well, my own experiences are playing 4, 4 Golden and some of 5, but yeah, uh, this would appeal to me. Because it's uh, bringing older archaic style up to the modern age. To make it more honestly, accessible. Honestly, the uh, the thing that I'm surprised more people aren't upset about is the fact that they announced a Persona 3 remake, despite the fact that we already have Persona 3 on all consoles. I think it is... I, I Yeah, I found that rather interesting timing, considering that by the time we get Persona 3 re Reloaded, it will be just over a year since that happened. Yeah, so I'm surprised more people aren't like up and arms about it. Honestly, uh, I also I, the thing that people are more con this seems a bit more concerning. Other than the thing that people can have been a bit more concerned about, other than uh, the lack of portable and FES content, is uh, the new voice cast. Oh uh, no, actually, I've online I've heard a lot of a lot of praise after seeing what um who's being cast. Yeah, there's like some... a lot of people are now a lot more positive about it. Yeah, they are definitely more positive about it. I think one of my interesting things I've noticed is Igor wasn't put in the cast, and he, I noticed Igor's been disappearing from a bunch of Persona games recently. He, I promise you, that's not changing. Uh, Igor isn't in all Persona games. 
His voice actor has not changed, I don't think. I don't think that's going to be changing. I think... Uh, we, uh, we do see Igor in the trailer, so he is going to be there. Yeah, okay. Because I was interested because there was... I think there was a... Co there was a tax controversy around the Japanese actor who played Igor, and that's why he's not in Persona 5 Strikers. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, in dub, though, I'm certain we're going to get the same voice yeah, actor. Yeah, I'm least. thinking in dub we're going to get the same voice actor. I think in Japan he yeah. might be recast. Also, we have seen we've seen uh we've seen the art for the new art for the characters. Talk about a glow up! They look amazing. Yeah, they look a glow up. I uh, that that is it's a really well. I think this here's the thing though, Elliot. Do you think this announcement would have hit better if the leak hadn't happened? Oh, absolutely. And I was keeping this quiet because I'd heard about the trademarks getting filed for Persona Three R and. Pers Persona 5T, and I thought, I've got to keep this quiet from Elliot. Again, I, I probably wouldn't have believed it anyway, because, again, we recently got Persona 3 come out. But, um, and, been... I thought, and I thought, at least this game means... Uh, but I was going up to it thinking, well, at least at the Xbox show, Elliot's going to have something you'll like. And then it got blown. I was like, oh, great. Um, yeah. And it's... only half an hour after the Summer's Game Fest ended as well. So no one was talking about that anymore. <laughs> Incidentally, um, I feel really bad for the person who was fired over that because that's—I felt that was an honest mistake. Um, next up was a uh, um, game I really want to see at this thing: Avowed, Obsidian's Obsidian's um, for a take on Elder Scrolls games. First of all, anyone think that the title for Avowed looks like something looks like an, something you find on an MMO game that came out in like the early two thousands? It definitely has a bit of an EverQuest feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's launching in twenty twenty four. Obsidian to me are the insomniac of Xbox, so I've got every um, goodwill that this is going to be good. And I've also noticed it was running in 60 FPS in the trailer. So if that, if that's coming out at 30 FPS, then they really are rushing it to release. Yeah. Uh, Reese, help me out here. Was that trailer in 60 FPS? It wasn't on the Game Awards stream because uh, that stream was only 30 FPS. And so looking at the uh, look at the trailer now, it definitely doesn't look like it's in 30. Uh, is there a way that it can you can sort of convey that a game's running in 60 FPS on a 30 FPS stream, though? Not particularly, no. You'll, ha you'll have to go into the Xbox original stream and see if it's an option. To yeah, I, watched, I watched it on the Xbox One. It, 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 doesn't look, it looks like it's in 60. But um, uh, we'll come to uh, our thoughts on, on FPS, but um, there's... Oh, fucking silence that. Um... But there's uh, there's a lot, but there's a lot going on in this. I mean, it does seem it does seem like a bit of a more tongue in cheek take on like Elder Scrolls type gameplay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but the um, enemy designs are quite funny. Like the giant mushroom bear was the highlight. I will say one thing is, considering what that first trailer looked like, this was not what I expected a vow to look like when it came out, when it, we finally yeah. got to see it. It's a lot more colourful than I was expecting. Yeah, it's also not as detailed as I think as I thought it would be. Yeah, I think people were expecting a more photorealistic game, and they'd gone for a bit more of a a different sort of style. I I've heard some be I've heard I've heard it been said that they think the textures look terrible, and I think. I don't think they look terrible, but they're, they're not... They, as just big... look, they just look a bit, for lack of better terms, underwhelming, I guess. Mm. Um, now, this obviously will be an Xbox and PC exclusive, uh, but I think this is a real strong one. I think if they can prove that Obsidian have a really interesting idea with this one, they could draw people in. And I'm glad it's almost done, because I want Obsidian to really... But uh, I want, I'm looking forward to Obsidian's game after this with a, a Outer Worlds two. Mm. Uh, so that's uh, what do you reckon of a Vald Reese? I think it looks good, but we'll have to see more of it to to really know what it's like. I think we'll see a Vald again at either the Game Awards or a January Developer Direct. It it depends when Xbox want to give that release date. I mean, it's coming out next year, so we kind of have to. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think Xbox will do a very similar marketing campaign 
for their 2024 games that they did with the games this year. So, uh, Elia, what do you think of Avowed? Is this one that you're thinking, uh, this is one I'll download with my Game Pass subscription? Uh, looks, I don't know. I mean, it, look, it looks fine. I'm not massive on Elder Scrolls, if I'm honest, but who knows, I might check it out. Uh, as I say, um, I, I'll, uh, it's twenty twenty four. I'll, um, I'll keep. I'm, I'm really. I've been very excited for Avowed ever since the Series X came out. So I definitely will pick it up. Uh, next one is a crossover that I thought was so obvious that I can't believe no one thought it up. Sea of Thieves is crossing with Secret of Monkey Island. Quick question: yeah. When I saw Lucasfilm, am I? Please tell me I'm not the only one who thought Star Wars. Well, yeah. because I of my I'm an knowledge of how of of the fact that Lucasfilm made Monkey Island, I immediately thought, oh, oh, for crying out loud, this is going to be a Monkey Island and um, Sea of Thieves crossover. But no, I no, I was expecting to see an X wing just fly across. I was just like, I was just thinking, really? Then Monkey Island, I was just like, okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. I'm amazed it took him this long to do a Monkey Island crossover. This seems like the most obvious thing in the world. Maybe it's just an issue with uh, the rights, trying to get them. Well, yeah, they obviously yeah. would have to have negotiated with Lucasfilm quite a bit over this one. And um, it's cool they're bringing the voice cast in from that um, Return to Monkey Island, which was a much better game than a lot of people gave it credit for. That was the uh, uh, remake that came out. The other no, it's not, a re it's not a remake. It's a sequel. Yeah, it's, it's a new uh, one. It's the newest one, right? Yeah, yeah, the newest one is a sequel. It is actually a follow-up to the old Monkey Island games. Um, it. Uh, I would urge you. Uh, Return to Monkey Island is fantastic. If you like the old games, give this one a go. It's really good. Um, but I mean, I I, I struggle to get into Sea of Thieves. But Calvin, I, it's pirates. That's literally your fetish. I I know. I want to. I want to get into Sea of Thieves because it's like the sort of game I would want to make, but. It's a case of it's almost useless if you want to play by yourself. And I'm like, I don't have a guarantee I'm going to get co-op people at any time I want. Yeah, it's because mm. uh, otherwise it's very bare bones if you're single player. And that's the thing. It's a case of if I, if like you guys say every sa every Saturday or so, right, every Saturday at six, we're all going to log on to Sea of Thieves and play a bit of that. I'd be Not like, every yeah. Saturday. But that's the point. If I, if we like had a set time for like when we're gonna play a certain like live service game, I would join in. But I'm like single player wise, it's something that I've noticed with a lot of these live services. A single player wise, they feel very bare bones. It's really in desired for you to have a lot yeah. of your friends play. Yeah, some of the lot of I feel like a lot of live service games don't quite understand. They always work better if it's a multiplayer. Yeah. Um, now, help me out here, guys, with this. Oh, by the way, uh, Mon uh, Sea of Thieves um, Legend of Monkey Island comes out July 20th. It's available immediately if you have Game Pass. Um, next one, I need you guys to help me out here. Is this a new game or is this an update to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? It's a new It's a new one. So we're getting a new... It literally new... says Flight Simulator 2024 on it. So a brand new Microsoft Flight Simulator. So Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024... I don't know if this is going to come to Xbox same day as PC, but I, they they normally prioritize PC for these games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, it looks like the things they're adding here are a bunch of other type, types of missions, like um, harvesting, like being a um, a plane, a farm plane, doing mountain rescue, air with, ambulance, air uh, amb construction. Uh, it looks like they'll add a bunch of extra sort of like mission modes. The problem I had with um, mis the mission structures in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is you weren't allowed to play them on easy mode. So I felt locked out from that and I had to just create my own missions as a result. Um, which is really annoying because I thought that these must be some of the best flights in the game. And uh, yeah, I can't do them because this these controls are so finicky and I'm like playing it. So, Wait, I'm pressing the up button. Why am I falling? Why am I, I mean, falling? Because when you move up on the on the flight, you go down. Yeah, I know. I'm holding yeah. the thing down. I'm holding the trigger down. I'm holding the trigger down. I was like, wait, why is there th this issue happening? I don't understand. And then I've got to... It, I think the game is very focused on like being realistic. Is why it's mostly played by pilots. Yeah. I, I noticed because I have a lot of friends who are pilots. 
and it's made for it's called hotas controls with the joystick which is hands-on throttle to emulate an actual pilot's uh stick so you you push down to put the nose of the plane down <laughs> and is, pull up to that this is basically so it is flipped yeah. So it's, think. so it's basically a fantasy for pilots to say, I get to do these flights that air traffic control will never let me do. Yeah. Yes, and, and you'll be surprised, almost every pilot plays this game. I... <laughs> but it, 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 you think they, they'd have enough of their work. They're like, no, at home, I'm going to do my job again. Yeah, it, it's weird. It's like, um, it's like a joke Jack Whitehall did with Rooney saying, like, I'm finished with work. Now I go home to play FIFA. <laughs> it's just like, Surely you want a break after that. I yeah. mean, I mean, in all, in all fairness, we play, we review games, we review games as a job, and yet when we're done, we play games in the evening. Yeah, I mean, uh, we all, I think we always have like a wind down game of like it's not something we're reviewing; it's just something we want to play. So, like for example, at the minute I'm trying to 100% new Pokemon Snap, I'm nearly. Uh, I play a lot of Miles Morales at the minute. Oh yeah, you want to get the platinum in that? Yeah, you know, I, I need to. Um, I need yeah. To but I, I want to try and get it before the new Spider-Man game comes out. So, um, actually, uh, interestingly, on that point, uh, uh, um, actually, with Flight, figure so, Flight Simulator 2020 is an impressive piece of software because it's essentially the world in this yeah. game. Something that they've also announced is that they're collaborating with Dune. Yeah, that you're going to play the the uh, the um, that thing from Dune that they fly. Flew the sort of dragonfly uh, helicopter thing. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out when the new film does. Yeah, uh, which I mean, I'm going to be in the cinema that day seeing Dune Part Two. Dune Part One was phenomenal film. So, the, uh, I haven't, I haven't seen it. I am holding off until the second film comes out so I can watch it two back to back. I real, I reckon that really will be the best way to do it because um, they are one complete story at the end. Yeah, day. and I mean uh, they're they're both they're both like halves of the same book. Yeah, and it it kind of um I mean we'll get we we you obviously won't get to a conversation about Dune because we'll be here all day because it's a really oh, cool yeah. it's a really cool franchise. But um, I, I it it is cool they're doing these movies crossovers because we've now had Top Gun Maverick and we're now getting Dune. I'm yeah. hoping there's more aerial based movies that we can add to the mix. In the yeah, future. that was the Ace Combat Seven with Maverick. Planes two. At a crossover. <laughs> that would be a weird crossover. Um, yeah. uh, but the next one was a thing we needed to see. We got a new in-engine trailer for Hellblade 2, and they've given it a release window of 2024, which I think it'll make. I think Hellblade 2 makes 2024. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And honestly, what the fuck happened in this trailer? I have no idea. Have you guys played the this first Hellblade? This is trippy. I've I've not, but I, I I've, I've seen a playthrough of it. It's up been on my list for the longest time. I have a friend who keeps insisting I play it. I'm definitely doing it before like, this game comes out. Yeah, it's yeah, re- it's it's Cal who's recommended it to you. Not just Cal, it's another friend. Um, I'll be on, I'll be honest. The bl- I I wouldn't entirely recommend it to people because I think it's one of those games that it can really infuriate you because if you die too many times, it erases your save file. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and I fucking hate that. But this is very the point I was making is this is very much in line with Hellblade One. Uh, this trailer, it's in fact I actually I played this game with a headset or with like I plugged in some headphones into my controller, and the voices will come out from either side of your headphones. It actually was doing my head in part way through, and I just yeah, I did say, oh please shut up, and I realized I was talking to nothingness. And it, it does have that way of getting in your head and really throwing you off. So I'm wondering what they'll do with Series X technology. I mean, the, the game the game looks, like, stunning. Like, yeah. this is one of the best-looking games on the console, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. And it's the first major Xbox first-party game that's going to be made in Unreal Engine 5. So that apparently has meant that has what has what's kept the development going as long as it has the shift to Unreal Engine five. Um, yeah, but it it will be worth it just going off the trailers alone. Yeah. Uh, next uh, up was uh, one for Elia that I didn't realize was going to be here. The eighth like uh, a, eighth Yakuza this- game is here, like a dragon, infinite wealth. 
This was my fucking highlight. Ichiban is back. And he's naked. Yes! <laughs> and it's set in Hawaii this time. Yeah. Which, considering uh, Japan and Hawaii, Japan and Hawaii's like economic connections and the fact there is, uh, I believe there's a large Japanese population in Hawaii. So uh, I, I thought that cross that makes you go, yeah, this makes total sense to set a Yakuza game in Hawaii. Yeah, I just find it, I just find it funny. The first game Ichiban started off homeless, and now in this one Ichiban started off homeless. <laughs> But naked as well now. Yes, we've had an upgrade this time. Um, but w wow, considering this was a PlayStation centric franchise for Xbox to get the reveal of it, this is to me is very similar to how it felt with Kingdom Hearts 3 showing up at Xbox's E3 show. It was like, I'm glad it's here, but something about this doesn't feel right. No. Yeah, but just, I mean, good God, Ryuko Kataro is just. Spoiling us. First, Gaiden gets announced, and now and now Yakuza Eight. That's just amazing. And it's early twenty twenty four. I was like, wow. I thought they were gonna put like this is coming like summer or autumn twenty twenty four. Early twenty twenty four. So it's. I mean, I mean, in all fairness, uh, the last Like a Dragon game came out uh twenty twenty, I think. Mm. Yeah, but you've also got to remember in terms of like the spin offs they've been doing. Look at what we're gonna have in like a, the space of, like. 12 to 15 months you're gonna have ishin gaiden and infinite wealth i mean what wow yakuza fans are eating good at the minute yeah what can i say ryuko katara studios like uh like pumping out these games constantly yeah and sega really uh, i can see now why sega uh is really relying on them it's one of the most consistent franchises they've got at the minute yeah it's also one that most highly acclaimed I'm hoping they'll put um, some of those uh, Sonic Arcade games back into this one, because that was one of my favorite things about going to the recent Yakuza games. You could get those old Sonic games that Sega keep refusing mm. to re-release in any other fashion. Um, but, it, I mean, obviously, Elliot, this is a day one for you. Here's the thing, though. You... Awesome. Absolutely. Here's the thing, though, Elliot. I've got a thought on this. And I'm mm. going to come back to this one. The same with Persona, uh, actually. And I'll go for the Persona game that we're going to talk about in a minute. The fact that these games are on Game Pass, but they're so associated with PlayStation, and they, and in the case of Persona, there'll be Switch versions. Are you more likely to get these through your Game Pass subscriptions? Oh, no. These are definitely PlayStation purchases. That's interesting, because I'm a bit on the fence on it. Because I feel like with Like a Dragon, I might get that one on my Game Pass subscription. Yeah, again, both on uh, PlayStation, and I'm, I'm also going to be buying the Persona 3 remake for Switch as well. That'll be... Yeah, yeah I'm double dipping here. Yeah, I'm going to double dip he's, with Persona. He's doing a cow. Yeah. Someone stop him. I am going to definitely do it with um, Persona, with the next Persona game we're going to talk about, because then I will have all that trilogy in a row. Um, but let's talk... But obviously, we're all excited for that one. Let's talk mm -hmm. about the next one. Oh, Jesus, I forgot about this. Uh, upgrade coming. Fallout 76. Atlantic the City. Game. How is that game still a thing? I mean, it's improved a, a lot. Apparently, basically, from what I've heard, Fallout 76 at the minute is in the state it should have launched in. Yep, with a fraction of the player base still there. <laughs> and. I mean, this trailer was all right, but it was a case of, I'm not going to... Even if it's on Game Pass now, I'm not going to jump into Fallout 76. No, it's too too late. Yeah. Like, even the article I see, I'm reading on it, it's just say like, all the others, it's like going into detail, like, really hyping it up. It's just like, it's Fallout 76 on Game Pass. That's it. That's the headline. Uh, Pretty much. So, next thing up was another game from Capcom. I thought they would come to this thing with the last... Big, uh, big push for Exo Primal. Considering Exo Primal is a Game Pass, uh, ga uh, uh, game, on day one, but they are coming in. But they've got this new thing. It's called Path of the Goddess. It'll presumably uh, be tonight. Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess. Kanitsugami mm. Path of the Goddess. It's presumably coming. Uh, we're going to get a few more details about it on tonight's Capcom showcase. But wow, this looked really good. It looks damn good. 
visually one of the most impressive ones we've seen in the showcase. It, it, I, I thought it might have been. It, I thought, I looked at it and thought, I can't think of another Capcom game that looks like this. This looks really original for them. The, the closest not, I could have was possibly like Okami. Yeah, it's not very often like we get um, a Capcom game based in. Uh, based in Japan, really. The last one I think we get, we got was a uh, was Monster Hunter Rise. Normally, yeah. it's like normally they like base a lot of the games in America. Yeah, Capcom definitely has that a, a, a thing about that, and um, I suppose you could say part of Street Fighter Six, but that, there's definitely a more of an American feel to Street Fighter. There always is a Street Fighter, though. It's a very American franchise. Um, actually, to the uh, the point of this. Uh, this one, um, if this comes on PlayStation, uh, PlayStation, I presume Reese, you'll want to pick this one up. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, uh, Elliot, it, I'm assuming uh, this one's on. This one's on your radar now. Uh, absolutely, it looks gorgeous, dude. It looks amazing. Yeah, this was one of the hidden gems of the show for me. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am surprised not more people were talking about this after the showcase was finished. Yeah, I am as well. I was like, why is no one talking about this? This game looks really good. There's another I game. I think maybe it was just overshadowed by a lot of the other things. Is like, again, we're getting uh, just the only one I can re that's on my head is that we're getting a new Yakuza, for example. Mm. I mean, we'll come back to um, uh, this What? We'll, we'll come back to it because it's another game that I think also fits that category, but I think I might be the only one in it. I'm not sure how YouTube will feel about it. But um, the next entry was uh, a bit more on information on Forza Motorsport. It finally has a release date of October 10th. And uh, this looked pretty good to me, but it's a case of will it be, be will it clear the low bar of Gran Turismo 7? And I think it will. I It'll mean, obvi obvi obviously it will. Force has been killing. Force has been killing it, and Gran Turismo has just been there. Yeah, with egregious uh, macro transactions still this long after launch. Yeah, like, se like seriously, I jumped back on Gran Turismo Seven when I got my uh, VR two headset, and it, it it baffled me that it still it didn't feel much different than it did a year ago. And you would have thought a live service game in that time would have had some significant change. Mm. Yeah, because it, it's that bad. The previous game, which brings like Gran Turismo Sports, I think it was called, where it was all pay to play, where you buy the cars. That still worked out cheaper than in Seven with the new monetization system. Oh. Can I say what I think one of the models for live service games would be for me? I would accept live service games coming in with. Um, minimal content if they had like monthly updates after the fact you know like how uh and the game that did this very well was uh, it's not a live service game but i thought it did very well with this model was animal crossing new horizon because it yep. made that that game came in it was quite good but it felt like you need a little bit more and it felt like... i would agree except for the fact that most of the stuff they bought back was just content from the previous games i know but it did i have... say a better comparison will be splatoon yeah, Splatoon also has that quality where they both launch quite well, but you want a little bit more, and then they slowly give you a little bit over time, and it and it, and it makes those quick reveals feel quite important. It's like, oh, excellent, I've got a reason to still play. I get to do this one. So like with Animal Crossing, it was a case of, excellent, I've got this holiday coming up, and um, I could do some swimming this month, or... And it, they did a very good job of that, whereas I feel like with grand games like these, they haven't really nailed that. And, it, and it, it really baffles me. But if we go back to Forza Motorsport, it does look very good. Oh, Cars. Yeah. I mean, brum, brum. if this game is not running at 60 FPS on Series X, then we really have a serious situation on our hands. You cannot yeah, have it, this. It, it needs to be. Yeah, it's going to. I'm certain. I'm certain it will. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was. I I'm pretty sure this runs at 60 fps. But uh, it, it looked like it was in the trailer at least. Uh, this is the one time where I will say I will not download this if it's 30 fps. Oh uh, no, this this is definitely 60. I'm looking at it right now. It's 100% 60 fps. Um. So that's October 10th. I am. I've got the review job for that one. Um. And I'll be interested to see how much higher I score it than rescored Gran Turismo Seven. 
I'm going to assume at least three points. Uh, I'll just double check what Reese's score for Gran Turismo 7 was. Hang on a second. Mine wasn't that high because there was a lot of problems that I documented and yeah. Here we are. Here we go. Gran Turismo 7 review. Uh, yeah, you've done the story mode. All 39 menus completed. Come on. Get to the point. Uh, right, here we go. Reese scored it. Oh, wow. I forgot you scored it that low. He scored yeah. it 4.9. Yeah, I below average. I still think I scored a uh, Mario Golf lower than that. Uh, and that is also going to be beaten by Gollum uh, this week. Spoilers, Elliot. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> I'm totally going to give high praise to Lord of the Rings Gollum with Gollum, with a Charles book rendition of him. God, that game sucks. Um, How do you think I feel? Next, uh, next game, uh, another look at the update to Elder Scrolls Online, the Necrom update. It it's just stuff from Skyrim with the first Dragonborn. Another, another, another announcement where you the response is wait, people are still playing that. Uh, yeah, no, there's a huge online community for that one. But um, the thing is, though, with that trailer, I thought uh, the one thought that went through my head is I will never get sick of hearing the Skyrim theme. Yeah, that's yeah. that theme song still hits now it's uh, it's like hats off to the composer they composed an amazing theme song yeah um what was what was after that oh yeah there's um overwatch overwatch 2 uh, they call it a new adventure begins october 10th and uh, august 10th i should say and they, they, they sort of tease you with the idea of we're finally getting an Overwatch campaign, and then they turn it back and say, actually, it's kind of just this co-op mission that you could have done, we could have done anyway. Yeah, which is what they did in the first game, if you remember, with stuff like Black Watch and everything. Just make a campaign. That's yeah. what people actually want. They want. A f I want to see these characters interacting with each other, and like this is the one. We'll swap this this part of the mission. We're gonna to swap to May. May's done her you part. Quickly, go to um, Winston. He's got his part. You can always just watch the porn films. Oh God! I, look, As if he wasn't doing that already, Elliot. I, I, I Overwatch Two has completely burnt burnt my enjoyment of the franchise, and I'm just I'm I'm really done with it at this point. Yeah, the the, the player base is nearly dried up. People can't get into matches anymore. There's so few players; they're really struggling. Yeah, uh, and it doesn't help that they had that negative press of they're getting rid of the PVE mode, which was the whole thing that Overwatch Two was sold, and they're rethinking that and what they're going to do instead. Like, well, then why do we kill Overwatch One? The whole point of Overwatch Two was the PVE was coming in, yep. and now you're saying we're not getting that, and we're not getting the skill tree system that was going to make each version of these characters for each player unique. Yep. Fuck's sake. Yeah. Just uh, a waste. So, uh, let's look at what, what was next. Ah, oh, cheer up time. Um, Atlas comeback. Persona 5 Tacticia. A strategy RPG set in the Persona 5 universe. This looks amazing. I'm confused on how close it's going to be to the canon, considering the vast cha the significant change in our style. Uh, yeah, it reminded me a lot of the Persona Q games where they have those uh, weird fan service cross yeah. non canon fan service crossovers. Yeah, but seeing as this is like very, this is very, very much based around Persona 5, it makes me wonder like if this is going to be like full on canon, if they're like going to comment on them looking very different and whatnot. Apparently, uh, the because people weren't happy with this, another aspect of this one that was in press releases, it's coming with day one DLC. Uh, oh. Which I think adds an extra, uh, adds a few extra bits and bobs to it. I there's some hint that um, it's going to add some catchy missions to the to the game. Yeah, that that makes every Persona Five fan happy. The fact that we're getting a catchy back. But um, there... bring in Kasumi, and I will be one hundred percent happy. Can I just say as well, Elliot, the thing you sent me, you sent us in the in our Twitter group chat the other yesterday with a catchy doing the lines from that guy on on twitter was yeah. fucking hysterical that i've never it, laughed it was amazing um i thought oh this is the perfect character to voice that thing out i'm like yeah. who says mario isn't a real game fuck off 
Um, I, oh, you know, everyone, all those PlayStation fanboys who say who says, oh, la- who keeps saying, oh, the last of us killed my dog and Aves and lost my virginity, took my virginity, you know, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I know those, like that crowd, yeah. There's, um... <laughs> so, it's interesting we've gone from Persona R to Persona S to Persona T with this one. Um, I, I, the game it really reminded me of, because I know they're going for, like, an XCOM type thing with this. Let's just hope we don't get a Persona U. Otherwise, otherwise, it will launch with incredibly terrible games, and Scott the Wasp will talk about it for that six hours. Ha! <laughs> Took me a minute to get that one, but um, the game that really reminds me of uh, from looking at it is Mario Plus Rabbids. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it is a very. I mean, I I, I both got like a Fire Emblem thing. Uh, impressions from it or like I don't know, Final Fantasy Tactics or something. There's definitely a thing about positioning because I noticed that they got those characters in like a triangle formation and that meant they could do an all-out attack. So I thought yeah, that it's, was... it, it definitely seems like it's doing its own thing a lot like what Persona 5 Strikers did. Taking them from, Persona 5, from the Persona games and making them work in another format. I can't remember who they said is developing this one but uh, good news is they got the entire voice cast back which is Great, because that cast is fantastic. They have to. They have to get that cast back. Um, good. But... I will be dead in the grave before I don't have Matt Mercer as Yusuke. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, I stand by possibly Matt Mercer's greatest role is his performance as Yusuke. Yeah. Um, incidentally, um, it's coming out on November the 17th. Um, presumably, I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to, the sensible person, if I was sensible, I would only download this on Game Pass and I wouldn't spend money on it, but I'm not a sensible person, so I will be picking up the Switch version as well. I'm just going to get the Switch version, I'm not going to bother with the Game Pass one. And I might even pick up the PS5 version for a stream purposes, but then again, by that point, we might be changing up how we're doing our streams altogether. So, um, obviously, that... yeah, do you need a reminder, everyone, that Calvin is terrible with money? Yes, we do. Uh, in fact, we're about to get one in a minute. Um, uh, in term, uh, but the that's but I will say, Persona 5 Tacticia is now one of my most anticipated games of the year. I'm dead excited to get my hands on it. I love anything Persona 5. Yeah, definitely. And it mm. looks like that these two games will not be the last Persona game we get before. Um, uh, we're not going to the other Atlas reveal in this, but the um, before we get Persona Six, which apparently, from what I've heard from my reliable sources, Persona Six. The... Yeah, it's it's actually I actually saved an article about it. Asuka who revealed Persona Five Reload and Persona Five Tactics. So three Reload, sorry, Persona Five Tactics. Iron work. Iron works. Are in the works that uh, Alice has stated the, the next mainline entry in the Persona series, Persona Six, will lo- is going to launch in twenty twenty six. It's the reason why we've had a lot of spinoff games. Twenty twenty six. I last I heard it was actually late twenty twenty four. We'd get expect to see Persona Six. No, that twenty twenty six is where they're like aiming for the next mainline entry. And is this from Atlas themselves? It's from it's from the person who leaked Persona uh, Persona Three Reload. All I can say is uh, the person who also collaborated that information suggests who corroborated the information on this said he thought I've heard I've heard another leaker say late 2024 is Persona 6. So, but I'm wondering if that's now pushed to 2025 or 2026 as your as your guy is suggesting because I've heard there is a Persona Party game in the mix like Persona Mario Party. I mean, we've got Dangan Romper Party, so. I'm up for anything at this point. Oh, I'd love it if they did everyone from like Persona Three, Persona Four, and Persona Five. I, I, and... Hell, why not? Why not make it weirder? Uh, bring in the Call of Duty party, or oh, what? What's this? F- uh, fucking Elden Ring sports? Like, just do anything at this point. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't try Elden Ring sports. I reckon Rykard is much better as a goalie than we think he is. Yeah. Uh, um. The next Nah, clearly the best goal clearly the best goalie would be Godric. Oh Godric, definitely. He can and um I'm gonna have Melania as the striker. Um 
we're speaking of of um of weird ideas. We're gonna move into Starfield now because Starfield was the next trailer. I don't know why they had a Starfield trailer when they were having a full forty minute showcase about about it afterwards. Only for people like me who didn't really watch the watch the direct. <laughs> okay, so uh, I won't go into detail about the Starfield direct because it. I think people should experience it for themselves, and it was absolutely huge, but. I don't know how they fit all, uh, but Starfield, if they can pull this off, this will be incredible. Yeah, definitely. Like a thousand plus planets. It's out. I, I'm wondering how consistent is that frame rate actually going to be for a starter and how pop, how big are these planets going to be? What I wonder is how many repeats we're going to get. Yeah that's, Probably. A, yeah, that's a thing. And again, I do like the fact that your class is actually going to affect um, different missions. So, like, if you go approach a mission and you're that particular class, you'll get a benefit for starting the next mission. The one they demonstrated was the idea of you go into this restaurant, this guy needs a beast hunter to get a certain cut of meat. So you get an immediate bonus for that mission because you're a beast hunter. Uh, yeah. I'm... Uh, they also announced um, a controller, a headset, and the um, and the, the watch the, the 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 watch that comes as part of the um, the spe the collector's edition. So wait, yeah. they? I'm honestly surprised they're not announcing like a new console. Yeah, I was surprised as well. I thought they would do a few like what you get like what you don't give Starfield probably your biggest game ever a console, but you're gonna give it to a fucking Porsche car. Well, to be fair, you can't buy the Porsche one. You had to win that one. But um... I know, I'm not entering that. It looks <laughs> fucking hideous. Yeah. But they they've done the control. The, I bought the controller and the headset because I haven't got a second controller for my Series X, and I haven't actually got a headset for my Series X either. So I thought, well, I need those anyway. So I might as well. Do, wait, do you have a, a headset for every console? Well, yeah, because the the um the I just use this pair for every one of them. Yeah, but with the PlayStation one, I wanted to get the Echo headset because it had the 3D audio that I didn't have before, so I wanted to get that one. And um, but the point the point is, I got I've got that, and I did pre-order the collector's edition, but that was only because they give me five days early access, and I want to get a massive head start on this one. Uh because this is going to take me a long time and I'm setting myself the limit of I'm going to play this up until Spider-Man 2 comes out and then I'm just so, going to... about a month yeah I'm going to play it for about a month and then and then if, if I'm at the month point I'm like right I've just got to speed to the ending now but this looks like it's Bethesda's most ambitious title and if they can pull it off they've got a game of the they got a, this is going to be on Sony game of the year lists but if they fail, they'll be ridiculed for years. Yeah, yeah. that's a thing. And it's like, how many bugs are going to be here at launch? How, yeah. much, how much has that polish time that they've done with this delay actually helped? The thing I make that worries me a bit is the game being too big. That's... Because I know a lot, of, a lot of gamers have the mentality of, of, of bigger is better, where you just think, not always. I know. I, I kind of had a feeling when I was doing it's like, how am I going to experience all this? This feels like, oh, this almost feels a bit overwhelming in a sense. I mean, maybe... Yeah, like, it's as, an as an example, I remember when Dying Light 2 was coming out, uh, it was, they were both saying, oh, it's going to take you about 500 hours to 100% it. And you just think, that's too long. I have shit to do. And, yeah. and the thing is, uh, with Tears of the Kingdom, for example, um, uh, we, uh, that is another huge open world, but... I never felt like that felt like it was impossible to explore everything. It just like it would take a lot of effort, but it would be so worth it. It didn't yeah. it gave me it gave me that sense of it being huge but not overwhelming. Whereas in this one I get that sense meanwhile, of Meanwhile meanwhile with me with Tears of Kingdom, I kinda of have the feeling that is that it is that they may have made it a bit too a bit too big because I found myself like repeating a lot of the same things or having like ages while just doing nothing in that game. Um, I see what you mean, but I actually kind of like those moments of the just just existing in that world. And it's, will Starfield capture that? Will it be just existing? And 
how uh, is the game going to crash every time I want to like board another ship when like, if I'm doing like a piracy mission or it, am I going to go to a certain planet and it's going to bu- and the playtesters haven't really been there so it bugs out consistently um it, there, there's a whole bunch of things that concern me but I, I really respect the ambition that they've had this time with the game um I don't know how that watch is going to function because apparently it's like a smart watch that connects with your phone. You have an app that will help you in the game. Uh, but I don't know how that's going to affect things. I, on, honestly, I would say if you got Game Pass, you don't need the Collector's Edition unless you want the early access. Yeah. And Power the, just got it because, again, early access and, again, bad with money. Yeah, I was about to say, this is a bad with money thing. Also, that Collector's Edition... I would really say you have to be stu- you have to be really stupid with money like I am because it's two hundred and fifty pounds. That's more expensive than the Spider Man one. I know that's what I find astounding. And what's more, um, it's a it's only it's exclusive retail exclusive to game. You can't buy it on Amazon or even through Microsoft's own store. Like I bought the controller and the headset through Microsoft's store, and I thought, well, I'll be able to buy the collection from there. And I typed it in, and it was not there. So I checked a couple of other shorts, and then it said game exclusive. I'm like, oh no, don't do this to me. But um, good news is, I mean, I I buy all my stuff on games, so that's not a problem for me. The good news is, uh, the headset and the controller are available now. You can buy them now. My t- they're coming tomorrow, for me. But um, God, it comes. It, and look, we've made the jokes the other day of will Starfield actually come out? But I think we have to look at this trailer in this direct and say. Starfield is coming out September 6th or September 1st if you're getting the collector's edition in edition, which means we'll probably see the review bargo drop. Um, let's see, what's that? What, what's the, the week before that in August? Uh, we'll probably see the review embargo drop on the 29th of August, which incidentally will be the same day Sea of Stars comes out, um, which is another highly anticipated game for me. Uh, and that's the thing, the thing, and that's the thing though, at that point, we're going to be like, I'm going to have the attitude of, oh God, I've bought, uh, I've pre-ordered a stinker or wow, I have pre-ordered an amazing thing. I don't think this is going to go one way or the other. I think, and here's the thing. All I'll, all I'll say, no man's skies. Yeah, this I, I Reese, you had a comment actually about um uh, uh, about this a while back, didn't you? You thought this was just like No Man's Sky, but with more content. Yeah, and considering Professor's track record for launching games with a lot of bugs in, I would not recommend getting any Professor game day one. Here's the thing, though, this is the first one they've done since the Microsoft acquisition. They've obviously had a lot of help from Microsoft in getting this thing out the ground, and. I think Bethesda is very aware of that reputation, and they want to they want to store that reputation. They they and say we can deliver this really big, great game on day one. But obviously, we'll know we'll know ahead of time. I'm the the reviewer for that one, and um, we'll obviously discuss what post Starfield Xbox is going to look like at the end of this thing. But, um, next trailer was, um, this is actually one I really like the look of. It's called Just Ant. And it's like, it's a sort of climbing game that's coming in autumn of this year. And you have a weird monster baby on your back. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of, um, those pogs from, um, uh, Star Wars in Episode Eight. Anyone else oh, thinks oh, that the oh. anyone else thinks that the guy's eyes look weird? A little bit, yeah. But I like the art style of this one, and I'm interested to see what kind of game this is. And mm. I, I thought this one got a little lost in the shuffle because it looks really good, and it comes out in twi- in 2020 in autumn 2023. I might try this one out. Yeah. Um, Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I'll probably, I'll probably skip it. Honestly. Uh, another game coming in early 2024, Still Wakes the Deep. Didn't see much of this. It lo- Another one that looks very Bioshock-like. Uh, it's done by the Chinese room, so I'm going to say it's probably going to be more like something like Soma or Amnesia. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. It, that's what the Chi the Chinese room definitely make games like that. I mean, they they made Machine for Pigs. Yeah. That, uh, um, Reese, what do you reckon? Uh, it looks interesting. Uh, I'll say that. <laughs> what little we saw of it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I feel like we we need definitely need to see more of it though. And more gameplay. The, yeah. Dungeon of Hunterberg. I completely forgot this was a thing. I don't remember uh, this one. Oh, uh, no, I, uh, no, I didn't. It doesn't look that good. No, me neither. And then we got uh, Keanu Reeves came out to introduce Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. It's yep. got the release date of 26th of September. And I said to myself, this tra trailer is not going to blow my mind unless some of the, to, to avoid spoilers, some of the characters from Cyberpunk Edge Runners show up. Well, considering this is a sequel to 2077, it's very doubtful. No, this takes yeah. place during 2077. This is an expansion pass that um, oh. takes place during it. So it's uh, so the idea of... Cause, um, and the thing about it is as well, apparently it offers you the ability to have the alternate ending where um, uh, it gives you another ending to the game. And it's an ending that wasn't a possibility prior to the expansion pass coming out i mean the interest elber involvement looks interesting but honestly cyberpunk did not grab me as a as a game it just feels like a weird gta clone i mean i'll be honest i've been kind of tempted for a bit to go back to cyberpunk after i've heard they fixed a lot of the stuff in it so i might check it out M maybe but I, I don't understand why they give you all these amazing customization options and then have you be in first person where you're not going to get to see the benefits of it yeah and uh 277 is on sale now and it's uh cheaper than the uh the expansion <laughs> but, uh, i mean the game has been out for three years it's not surprising so uh, Reese, did this do anything to sort of convince you maybe on Cyberpunk 2077? Nah, not really. Uh, I... I, I, I I love Idris Elba in the role, but I don't think he's going to do enough to justify the purchase of the base game and the DLC. And the thing, and the thing is, though, again, I feel like Edge Runners really spoiled me with its storyline because that has a fantastic storyline. Again, I've, as I've said many times before, I'm very mixed with Edge Runners. Uh, and Reese, you come sort of, be you sort of come between us, I think, in terms of your opinion on Edge Runners. Yeah, I did really enjoy it, but it did have problems for me. Uh, so I mean, it was my anime of the year last year, but that, um, but I was definitely the outlier on that one. Um, I think Ren, of, sorry, no, Ren, Ren picked, uh, I think he picked the same as me, he picked Made in Abyss. Mm. Oh, yeah, but I was saying, he also, uh, really enjoyed Edge Runners. Yeah, no, he enjoyed Ed Runners. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, next up, new trailer for City Skylines Two comes out October twentieth. Did anyone else yeah. think this was Sim City? Yes. I yes, bet. that was the exact same. First, my first thought, because like City Skylines is still kind of new, right? Yeah, yeah, it's relatively yeah. new. It's it's still getting new expansions even now. Yeah, yeah. so I'm surprised we're getting a new one. Yeah, but cool, it's on Game Pass. This is a game I'd want to play on PC, though. I would not want to play this with a controller. I want a keyboard and mouse. Oh, absolutely. Any city development game like this should be played on PC. I tried yeah. playing, try playing that Jurassic World um, uh, Zoo Tycoon oh, yeah. uh, game with a controller. It was fucking impossible. I mean, if you want a challenge, you can always try Civ, with, Civ and Switch. Oh, Jesus hey, Christ. Tried it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It is not good. It's but really I can not imagine. good. And it should have worked on Switch. You would have thought the touch screen would have made sense. That would have been well, too restricting, though. That would be too restricting, though. That was like a, one of the criticisms that a lot of people had with uh, the world ends with you on Switch. Oh, yeah, no. The world ends with you on Switch is not great. And it's a shame because the storyline's fantastic in it. Thank God Neo, the world ends with you, fixed that. Mm. And we have the amazing anime that we all love. Oh, oh that that game deserved better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, net. Um, I mean, it's on Game Pass. I'll try out City Skylines too. I it looks all right, yeah. but at the end of the day, I'm not a big fan of the these sim games. Like the only one I've really liked are Zoo Tycoon, and that's it. I 
because they kind of restrict you a little bit more. Whereas I feel that the city games are a bit I have the sad issue that Ellie was going on about again too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, too too much and too big. Now this was an, one of the highlights for me. Uh, the pro the uh, the sort of untitled project that uh, the director of Personas Three to Five was working on finally got re revealed. It's Metaphor Refantizo. It's sort of like. Fantasy persona. Fantasio. Fantasio. And this looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him. Honestly, my first thought was, did they make a new Shin Megami Tensei already? Yeah, I thought, is this Shin Megami Tensei? Is this Persona 6? And they've decided to reveal it, and it's very different. But It's, you know. it's definitely taken a lot of inspiration from the, the series, though. Yeah, yeah, it's like, especially uh, when you take a look at the UI and like we saw a glimpse of the menu. That is very Persona. Yeah, it's like like wow, they put. I do love the fact Atlas put effort into their menus in a way that mo that, that no other company does, and it, it looks ex it looks great. I mean, it's coming next year. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't get delayed. But the there's a few things I noticed about this, which is. It doesn't look like they didn't show off too much of it, and it uh, they didn't have an English dub cast yet, so I don't know if they are going to bother with one or if it's going to just be a Japanese cast. And... No, they're going to do it. They, I feel like they're going to do a dub. They always do one for these games. I mean, how Soft Hackers two got a uh, dub? Yeah, true. And unlike the Persona games that we saw, this does not have any retail confirmation of any other version besides the Xbox Series X version yet. So uh, I think there will be a PlayStation 5 version, but it's a case oh. of when does that get revealed? Or is this a timed Xbox exclusive? I imagine it'll be timed. Yeah. Because after the showcase, Xbox did say a lot of these are going multi-plot. I yeah I feel like I feel like we're waiting on a PlayStation version and uh, we'll probably see it in like a state of play or something like by the way yeah. Metaphor is coming to PlayStation Five as well yeah. like six months or a year and it'll come out I reckon it's actually day and day I think it is actually coming to PlayStation Five as well and Microsoft just have the marketing deal on Metaphor uh, so I, again we're getting those other versions of the Persona games but Microsoft gets the marketing deal so when they do the big banner in Shibuya, it will have an Xbox logo on it. I mean, that's what happened with Persona 5 Royal coming to multiplayer. They had a whacking big poster for it in uh, Shibuya, and it just said the X Xbox Game Pass on it. That's where they're going with it. But I'm assuming for you guys, Metaphor is a day one pickup. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, pretty much, oh, yeah. for pretty much everything for Atlas is for me at the minute. Yeah. What about you, Reese? Yeah, I was blown away by that. So, like, it, 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 even Ali was saying before about the menus just looks stunning. Yeah. Here's the thing for me as well. I mean, this is a day one pickup for me, but to Ali's point, is Atlas a studio now that can do no wrong? Because I've, I don't think they've released I anything that's been low quality. I wouldn't go that far. I was a little bit mixed with Soul Hackers 2. Soul Hackers 2 was a bit mixed. Um, you weren't as big on Persona 5 Strikers as I was, I don't think. Oh no, I love that game. I I absolutely love that game. I think the difference is you picked if for your game of the year, I picked Tears of Arise. That's like the one difference. Yeah, and I think you nominated it still. Um, yeah, oh, it, it was it was it was like my second favorite game of that year. Oh yeah, no, it was absolutely a fantastic game of the game. But um, but yeah, I think... you were just tear, you were just tearing your hair out when Cal was streaming it. <laughs> yeah, I was because because there were four lanterns on the map. They were very clear where he was meant to go. He still did that. I made errors, all right. Um, Finally, he admits it. But uh, the thing that interests me, actually, with in regards to uh, to to these games, is well, actually there's another, another game that I think that Real Atlas did release that people don't take attention to, and that's Thirteen Sentinels. That is a phen oh, yeah. that's a phenomenal game, and no one bought it. Like, yeah, I think probably the visual novel aspect of it might have turned some people off. Yeah, but you do. It's have... the same thing. It's the same thing that sort of turned a lot of people off from Digimon Survive. Yeah, but I think the big difference is, um, I, I, with that being said, uh, Reese, you'd love it because it's basically a tact. It's a you then get like a mech shoot 'em game, partway. It's a visual. Yeah. 
I, 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 I do have it on PS5, just not played it yet. Um, I, I would. Uh, the point, the whole reason I haven't streamed it yet is just because people would hate the visual novel aspect to it. Yeah, it does not look like a fun game for people to watch. No, no, this is a fun game to play and slowly figure out the narrative as you go through these multiple timelines to um, figure out what's exactly going on. And because like it's one of those stories is told completely out of order until the end when it all comes together, and uh, it's one of those where you just go, "Wow!" by the end of it. And uh, uh, but uh, it's on Switch now as well, so I I would recommend that one even if you don't really like uh, visual novels because it does have a bit of extra interactivity to it. Uh, Final two trailers were because obviously there was a final few things before they got to the Starfield Direct, which we we won't cover now because we've already talked enough about Starfield. Um, mm. We got Tower Bo we got Towerborn. That's from Stoic Games. That's a first party game. Um, that's interesting with the whole hex based system. Yeah, I, I mean, this is an interesting first party game for Xbox to have. Wait, Xbox I just haven't really had a game like this before, have they? No, really. Wait, no. I'm, I'm just looking at the trailer. One of the guy, one of the uh, the ca characters in the trailer looks exactly like Fred from Scooby Doo. I I noticed that as well. I thought, yeah. is that Fred from Scooby Doo? Um, but I mean, it looks all right as a game. I'll I'll check that one out. I think when it comes out, seems yeah, yeah seems fine. Uh, next, a uh, final trailer before this. This definitely didn't have a release window, but In Exile wanted to reveal their new game, and it's a sort of time travel meets Bioshock thing. It's called Clockwork Revolution. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but personally, this really caught my interest, actually. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of like, Bioshock Infinite meets um, Dishonored. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely a feeling of both of those games. It, it, it was one of those where I went, I am cautiously optimistic about this. Um, what I'm not, really, what really I'm not even that you, sure Elliot? what kind of game it is. Like, it's a first-person action RPG, but is it like a time loop game? Is it sort of like, is it like just one with multiple different paths? I'm honestly not sure. Uh, mm. Elliot, what has really captured you about this trailer? Because they didn't show too much in it. Well, for starters, I'm a sucker for anything steampunk or even slightly looking like Bioshock Infinite. And second of all, I just like the um, I like the whole like I like the whole idea of it. I like that your changes seem to make a really significant impact uh, on on the world on the world. And you know, I'm just bit, I'm just really interested in it. Is all. Um. Yeah. I. I. I'll be interested to see how it turns out. In Exile are a pretty good studio, so I'll be interested to see what they brought up here. And uh, there was only one other thing before uh, they went to the Starfield Direct, which was they were showing off a bunch of new hardware. They have shown off now an Xbox Series S that's coming in for three hundred and fifty nine forty nine dollars. It's a it's a black it's a black model. And it comes with, uh, and it's, this time it's a one terabyte hard drive, which is what I think the Series S should have been. I mean, if you're going all digital, you need a big storage space. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because that's like three modern games right there. <laughs> yeah, so having... Two, or oh, two Call of Duties. <laughs> um, so what, uh, I'm going to be honest with this one. I thought... I, I kind of think that's a good idea, but I'm wondering how much that... Un and, I mean, this creates a new tier system. Do you want the Series S with the minimal spec, with the minimal storage? Do you want the Series... Then the middle tier is going to be the Series S with more, and then you've got the Series X, which gives you the disk drive and the, the more power. Um, I, I mean, I'm glad they've done it with... Uh, the biggest issue that I think Microsoft has at the minute is... They've got three tiers they have to make all their first party games on. Whereas if you look at Sony, they have a maximum two, but really at this point only one. So, like, you've got to make a series, because the ser you don't just port the game to a Series S. The Series S has to have a different scale to it because it's slightly downgraded. Because you've got to remember, yeah. like, Starfield's running at 1440p on Series S, and Series X it's 4K. Um, I'm wondering how is that actually affecting development of these games? 
I think the S is holding back developments. I'm not. I, I think the X is still fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it does seem a bit weird that uh, they've got this extra tier that uh, Sony and Nintendo don't have to worry about when they're making these game games. So. Uh, the, obviously, then we had the Starfield Direct, which we talked enough about Starfield and uh, we're very interested how it's going to turn out. How do we feel the Xbox showcase was overall? Considering that a lot of people thought this was a really great show and this is the best thing Xbox has done in years. I'll start with you, Elliot. What did you think? I actually, I think I'm in the uh, the minority with this. I think I honestly preferred the PlayStation showcase. Okay, I'm interested on in your that one, Reese. What do There's you just think? more stuff in that one that excited me. Um, what do you think, Reese? Uh, this may be the strongest one in years, but that's only because they've not had many good years. Yeah, I'm gonna say, so, yeah, yeah, we go. It, go it's, it's almost, it's almost like, well done, Jimmy. This, this house, the house fire you, this new house fire you caused is not nearly as big as the last one. I, for me, it was a case of, I think Summer Games Fest was a bit better because Summer Games Fest had a bit more of those wow, big deal moments. Whereas I feel like the sh Xbox Showcase, it had a few of those, but it also had a lot of downtime as well where I wasn't quite feeling it. Yeah. Um, there was some strong stuff in here. I think the update, they made the right updates to games they needed to do. They didn't announce too many new games unnecessarily. And they really showed off Starfield in an excellent way. I think the thing yeah. that really ruined it, that really sort of made it more disappointing for me, is the fact that the Persona games were leaked. That would have, yeah, I agree with you. I think that if there had been that big deal of wow, free, um, all the Persona games, that would have been amazing. But then again, you got to remember they were very selective with these leaks because. Metaphor did not leak, so there was the surprise of that. Yeah. Uh, are we agreed that... So at, the, at the same time, it may be a different team working on them compared to the ones working on the Persona games. It is rather interesting, because if I wouldn't have said you would have said of the PlayStation one, considering if you said on paper, this is going to have the new Yakuza game and three games from Atlas, two of them being Persona games. Yeah, but PlayStation also had a Yakuza game. And there's just more in that one that interested me. Hang on, did PlayStation have a Yakuza game? I thought the Yakuza, the other Yakuza game was in the Summer Games Fest. No, I'm pretty sure it was in the. I'm pretty sure it was the uh, PlayStation One. Gaiden was. No, Gaiden was. Actually, in oh, the... no, it was shit. Yeah, I don't know. Just, I don't know. I don't know. Just, I just, I, I'm honestly not sure. Like we get Summer Games Fest, it really wowed me with Like a Dragon Gaiden and Sonic Superstars. And we had the brilliant um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer. They really got they got, gave us the Spider Man release yeah. date. I think though, Xbox had a better showcase than I was thinking, but there were a couple of things here that were missing. Um, yeah, I mean, third party wise, two of the games I really wanted to see weren't here, which uh, were Jet Set, the new Jet Set Radio, and Final Fantasy IX remake. Um, why would why would they really why would they announce nine remake at the Xbox showcase? Because I I was thinking maybe they got a Game Pass deal for it and they had undercut mm. PlayStation. Final Fantasy is normally PlayStation though they're normally the ones who would show all that stuff. I, I was more wishful thinking that it was going to be here rather than I thought it was going to be here. But if we go, but the only other third party thing which I was really disappointed is not here because I think it means. We're going to go even longer with no information that we really should be is Hollow Knight Silk Song. Yeah. Like, Which that game is never coming out now. <laughs> here's the thing, guys. Because it's, it's, it's kind of happened with me. Has the constant lack of information, the fact that it's it seems so far from release, killed your hype for Silk Song? Not really, I'll be honest. But at the same, but at the same time, I'm... I'm someone who never really cares if a game gets delayed. But I kind of feel like I don't know why they showed this one off in 2019 because it it's a case of this was clearly nowhere near to release, and obviously COVID has played a big part in halting the development of Silk Song. But I I would have thought at this point we should be getting ready for release, not wondering when's the next trailer that we're going to see, and it's probably now not going to be till next year. Yeah. 
As I said, as I said, I just never really. I'm someone who doesn't who never really cares about delay, so I'm fine waiting even longer. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's going to be amazing when it comes out because Hollow Knight is an amazing yeah. game, but. Um, I I really wish it had been. I, I I. But then again, the next time I see Hollow Knight Silk Song, there needs to be a release date, not a window date, on yeah. on it. Because I feel like at that point you can't put a window on it and say, oh yeah, it might come out in this time, but then maybe not. Now I think you need to assure people this is when you're going to play Hollow Knight Silk Song. Um. Are we concerned at all about the development of Silk Song, considering we've gone uh, we've gone a full twelve months with no information? Um, don't know, don't know really. I mean, there are plenty of games that we just still that we that we've been waiting a long that we have been waiting a long time for, and yet apparently development are going fine for them. Bayonetta three being one of the perfect examples. Uh, Reese, are you at all concerned about Silk Song? Um, a little bit because I. I think they may have had to restart developments, considering it's been this long. Uh, judging by that last trailer we saw, I do not think development ever restarted. I think they've just been at, they've just had, they've gone, they've kind of done something that they did with Tears of the Kingdom when they've had so many ideas that they've just had to sort of keep pushing it back a bit more. Say, so, yeah, let's get this in there. Let's not make that DLC. Let's make sure that this comes into the final game. Um... I'm not very concerned about Silk Song's um, development. I think it's coming along well. But I wish it would come out sooner because I'm at a point where I want, I really I'm really kind of getting a bit fed up waiting. But yeah. um, first party wise, uh, the biggest uh, I mean I wasn't expecting to see Perfect Dark there. I mean that I but I think they got one more year, and next year they have to start talking about Perfect Dark. Like what's happened with that game? Uh, Stay of Decay Three. I'm surprised that didn't show up. I'm wondering what the hell's happening with that. I was hearing rumors about a new Dead Rising, and that didn't really show up. I don't. Know I think we will get the obvious one out of the way, where you kept saying we would be getting the banjo game announced at this one. Yeah, no, I'm a little concerned about that now. Which can I just say? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I deserve it. <laughs> I'm a bit some balls too. Nothing happens. Uh, I'm now wondering who's making that one because I was actually in my head thinking it was either Compulsion or in Exile. Or again, it doesn't exist. Uh, I'm wondering now because I, the last I heard of it was it was Sumo Digital that were doing it, but I don't know what they're up to at the minute. So they could be doing. I'm gonna have to consult a few people because I don't know what's. I'm gonna have to ask the leakers that broke it, and because it, 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 they may have changed their mind and said, you know what, may we got some wrong information. Again, but, Lenny, I've been wrong about that stu stuff for ages. Can I just point out, though, um, with Banjo-Kazooie, if this game does not exist, if there's no remake of the original or new entry in the series, what is Microsoft doing? You have a winner here. Make it. They, like, haven't, released one, they haven't released one in nearly two decades. Are you asking this now? Like, they, they must know that Nuts and Bolts went wrong because it was a bad direction. It was not that... Banjo-Kazooie is inherently something people don't want to play. L they have to look at the reactions of him coming into Smash Brothers and say, there is an audience for this character. They cannot ignore that. So if there never is another Banjo game or Banjo take... or we're waiting another five, six years before another, a Banjo game happens, my attitude is more... Why? Why did you not look at that and say this is something people want? I mean, all I'll say is you're complaining about not, let's not get a new banjo game. I'm thinking, I'm more thinking, I'm more thinking I want you conquer bad third day. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. What's wrong with what was wrong with conquer? Let's get more conquer. He was great. And um, my th well, my theory, the remake of it didn't do too well. Yeah, that that probably didn't help. And then you showed up in that Sparks demo, oh. if you remember. Yeah. Fuck me, that was terrible. Um, then the um, the Halo Infinite Battle Royale. I think that's gone back a bit further than I thought because I I'm wondering if the shift to the new engine has really affected things because they have done a shift for the Battle Royale mode in Halo. 
uh, what the hell has happened with this one? In fact, what's happened with Halo Infinite? I'm standing by, that's my worst, that's one of my worst scores I ever gave because I judged that on what it could have been rather than what it was. I, I really regret the score I gave to Halo Infinite because it's turned out to be a massive pile. Yeah. Well, don't, half the dev team has walked away now. Yeah, that's another thing. They they're really restructuring three four three. So three four three is in quite a bit of trouble at the minute. And yeah, uh, that that's the thing. I I do apologize for my eight point nine out of ten I gave Halo Infinite, but I think I was taken in by the fact it was a better campaign than than Halo Five and the yeah. multiplayer so was a decent start. You say that that's not an, that's not much of an achievement. I think I was. Just... It's like it's like it's like you saying it was a uh, Sonic Frontiers was the best Sonic game. 3D Sonic game you played in a decade. Yeah. But... Again, Lost World forces. Boom. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's owned me with that one. Um, it's um... not. That's not. That's not an achievement. That's a basic requirement. Yeah. <laughs> um. Actually, another thing we didn't cover in um, our Summer Games Fest thing is we now know that um, it's one of the studios that's working with Sonic Team on Sonic Superstars is the Balan Wonderworld studio. Oh, God. But Yuji Naka's arrested. Y yeah. How are they still around? Here's the thing, though. I am still confident in Sonic Superstars because the people that actually demoed it at um, Summer Games Fest said it was pretty good. And... Um, the some people also said that Sonic Frontiers was pretty good. I stand by that Sonic Frontiers is pretty good. No, there's and... nothing in the game, Cal. It's barren. And I also know it's barren Wonderworld. And you've also got to remember, and you got to remember that Balan Wonderworld went wrong, from what we know from the interviews, basically because management issues, rather than it's an untalented team. No, I more see that game, and I just think, how would you expect this to work? Yeah, I, I, I kind of want, like, obviously that, that one's completely screwed from the conception stage and they should have just said, we need to restart this because this is not working. But um, to first party wise, I can't think of much else that wasn't really here. There's no... That's because that's Microsoft doesn't have anything. They have a, they've got a few things definitely down the pipeline. Like obviously the Bethesda stuff is, a, actually that's another thing, it's software weren't there. Nor with the Wolfenstein uh, team. Yeah, it it it's software has been confirmed to be working on Starfields, helping out. Yeah, they're supporting. They're kind of doing like like Monolith Soft was with um, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. The difference yeah. is we still got Xenoblade Three. Yeah, 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 obviously, and id Software is working on their new IP. So that'll be, I mean, I'll be interested to see that when it come, comes out. I mean, maybe they'll mm. decide to show that off at the Game Awards. I mean, that'd be a good Microsoft showing at the I Game mean, Awards. I mean, also, I'm also just thinking uh, Doom Eternal is still, is still fairly, and I'm not really hoping for anything too soon. Yeah, it, it, it just finished its um, last expansion, I think, the last year or the year before. So that's yeah. Really so we got, um, other than that, I. I mean, I'd say the showcase was good, not great. I say I give it, I give it a B plus. Uh, B plus for me, yeah. I'd say B plus. Yeah. Um. That, so that was a good, a uh, uh, good one. Um. We're gonna cover a Nintendo Direct if it happens this month or next month. I'm. It's gonna be one of the two. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be getting a, a, getting a direct soon. I think it's a partner showcase later this month or next month. <laughs> Uh, I, I think Nintendo is going to announce their own first party stuff coming in the year, the year on Twitter, and then we'll have a proper direct in September before they have that event in Washington. Though that being said, the one thing that's giving me apprehension on that is Nintendo are going to Gamescom. So if they don't reveal something before Gamescom, they've got to reveal something at Gamescom because you do not go to the showroom floor and you have not much to demo at all, and you have nothing to demo. You need something that wants to draw people to that booth, so I think Nintendo will have something to talk about soon. Mm. I I mean, I'd, I'd be really disappointed if they had nothing for the second half of the year. That would be so bizarre. And just say, yeah, yeah. we made Tears of the Kingdom, we don't need to do anything else till 2024. I mean, we clearly have stuff by them coming out. The main one, the main one I can think of being Pikmin 3, Pikmin 4. Yeah, but they don't have anything. I'm, I imagine, imagine they're going to have to like, show off some more things. Yeah, because they don't have anything after Pikmin 4 at this point mm. in time. 
Um, other than, uh, well, they have Metroid Prime 4 on the docket, but we don't know when that's coming. The only thing I can really think of, no, actually, that's coming up before Pitman 4. Oh, yeah, everybody mm-hmm. 1 2 Switch. Oh, God. No. Oh, no, I was, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, uh, Great Detective Ar- Master Detective Archives, Project Raincoat. That's out the same day as Everybody 1 2 Switch as well. Wait, that actually yeah. exists? Yeah, seriously. Everybody 1 2 Switch. They have done a sequel to it. It's coming out the what same What the day. fuck? Yeah, Nintendo. It's a joke. No, Nintendo just put, uh, is genuinely releasing this. You can pre order it right now. No one cares, Nintendo. What the hell are you doing? Give us a new Mario Odyssey if you want to do something. Right. So, on that on that note, that's when you should expect another professional. Professional. We are gonna have. Um, don't know what's happened with Elliot there. Um, what? Sorry, if you were getting some reverbs of you of you turning up there, but um, there. Oh will... God! Again, hacked again. Um, they heard what you said about Sonic Frontiers, Elliot. The Sonic fanboys are after you. No, All two of them. No, nah, I think no, nah, I think it's Cyberpunk. I think it's Cyberpunk's fan saying I'm interested. I'm slightly interested, and they're thanking me for it. <laughs> so we'll be um, so, uh, but there will be an Anime Amigos on June the thirtieth, which incidentally yeah. means uh, we're not allowed to leave uh, the recording studio until my um, copy of Rain, my special edition of Rain Code shows up. <laughs> it's keeping us hostage. Help. Um, <laughs> But um, so we'll be back with that one, and of course, stay tuned to my Ren Street streams down the line. We'll we'll see you all real it's, soon. It's, it, we're having a special Ren's birthday stream tomorrow. That's fun. Woo! We'll see. We'll we're obviously we um, for the record we're not the reason we're not covering the Ubisoft Forward and the Capcom showcase is they basically confirm there's nothing new getting announced in these. Also, we don't care. We don't, we don't yeah. care about Ubisoft. We do care about Capcom, but they're definitely not going to have anything new. Um, yeah, it's, it's just gameplay. So thank you all for joining us. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye.